Welcome to another episode of Salty's Egg Balls. Uh, it's been a while since I've uploaded my last video uh, due to the coronavirus. Um, you know, as you know, most of the sports are suspended across the globe. Uh, so I thought I'll uh, discuss about my favourite all-time NFL head coaches. And today I'll be discussing about Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh, of course, is uh, a three-time Super Bowl winning um, head coach for the San Francisco 49ers in the 80s. Um, he's of course the architect of the West Coast offense, which has pretty much changed the way the NFL is being played today offensively. Um, so a little background about Bill Walsh. Started off as an assistant at the Cleveland Browns uh, under legendary coach Paul Brown. Uh, Paul Brown left the Cleveland Browns uh, and became the head coach of the Cincinnati uh, Bengals. Uh, the, at that time, you know, still, Bill Walsh was having troubles uh, finding a team. Um, he actually initially wanted to, to be the, um, the Green Bay Packers coach, but uh, Green Bay Packers never gave him the job. And uh, eventually he landed... Uh, as the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers in uh, 79. Um, now, with Bill Walsh, he added a philosophy and he added a kind of playbook that is something that the league has never seen before, never experienced before. Um, you know, his West Coast offense, he's actually made the West Coast offense. Um, you know, it's just literally short, quick passes out of the pocket, um, which defenses find very, very hard to uh, defend against. Um, you know, and that and that era, teams did not know how to stop his offensive scheme. Um, you know, you look at the uh, players that he he actually coached and mentored: uh, Hall of Fame quarterback Joe Montana, Steve Young. Dwight Clark, Ronnie Lott on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Cross, one of the greatest linemen to ever play the game. Uh, about Bill Walsh as well is he said he said to uh, Joe Montana, Joe Montana had, was struggling one time, you know, trying to do a play in his, his in his uh, in his offense, and he said, Joe, just imagine listening to classic music. And just think about your feet, you know, just think about your feet. And then he, and the, good, the funny thing was Bill Walsh actually talked to um, Mike Holborn, who was his, his assistant, and said, he said, don't you think John Montana has the best feet? And Mike Holborn was like, you know, what's this guy talking about, you know? What he meant was, it's like his footwork, you know, the way he was doing it, like the way he was, you know, taking steps out of the out of the pocket it was just like he was watching ballet. He said, um, so he actually gave a lot of a lot of thought to a small detail like that. Um, you know, because the way he saw the game was like an art. You know, and so when he when he used to call plays, it was like for him it was just like a painting. You know, ironically, his daughter actually is one of the most uh, famous painters in the Bay Area at the moment. So I just guess something runs in the family. Um, his so his first Super Bowl appearance was in Super Bowl sixteen against his mentor Paul Brown, where he faced the Cleveland uh, excuse, uh, excuse me he faced the Cincinnati Bengals. At the time, Paul Brown even doubted um, Bill Walsh's ability to um, to coach a head team, and there he is going up against his mentor in the Super Bowl and getting the victory. Uh, with players like Dwight Clark, Joe Montana in the team, and Ronnie Lott in defense. Um, in the 84 season, where he won Super Bowl 19, he beat the uh, the iconic Dan Marino and Don Shula's Miami Dolphins and managed to get his second ring. In 1987, however, he nearly got fired as the head coach of the uh, 49ers when he lost a playoff game against Minnesota in that divisional game at Candlestick. In that game, Montana was struggling offensively, and the, a lot of critics said that Montana is not the same player he was after an injury he suffered uh, in that season. So he opted to bench Montana and put in Steve Young, uh, the backup quarterback. And that's when the 
a footballing world saw a future in the 49ers if Montana was ever going to be stepping down as the um, as the head, head quarterback of the uh, of the franchise. Um, but fortunately for the 49ers, they didn't get the job done and they managed to um, to lose that game at Candlestick, which a lot of critics favored them to win the Super Bowl that year. But it didn't happen. In 1988, however, Walsh was having uh, the idea of trading Joe Montana. He was discussing it with his teammates, and uh, you know he was trying to figure out, you know, what am I going to do? I mean, like I've got this hungry young quarterback in Steve Young, who's clearly a lot more faster in the pocket than Joe Montana was. You know. Walsh had to make a decision and he actually talked to Mike Holm he goes, Mike, you know, what is wrong with my offensive team? You know, I'm having troubles, you know, getting through my my play to this team. He goes, it's very simple, Bill. You got to tell your team who's your quarterback is. And then Mike Holm, to his credit, said, I think I'll give Joe Montana the head, head coaching or I think maybe for Steve Young is a bit too soon. And then John Montana started, and uh, three, they managed to get their third Super Bowl against the Sandy Bengals, coached by Sam White, who was also under the Bill Walsh team uh, in their first Super Bowl in the in Super Bowl sixteen. So, after that season, Bill Walsh kind of resigned from the 49ers head coach. Um, a lot of people uh, were saying this is probably too soon for. Uh, for him to retire as you know he still had a couple of years left and he inherited this team and to be fair this is the team he actually built um i have a feeling maybe he had a lot of pressure maybe personal problems that um that really got into him he just didn't enjoy the whole pressure and the spotlight that was on him um i think he actually to be honest wanted to spend a lot more time with his family um and uh, that's probably why he didn't manage to coach the next year. Um, Sa uh, obviously, George Seifert is one of his assistants, managed to coach the, the team. And the following year, in 89, um, Seifert led the team to, uh, to, to their fourth uh, Super Bowl uh, victory. And pretty much that was Bill Walsh's team. In 2006, he suffered from leukemia. And in 2007... He passed away, unfortunately, um, which was a huge shock to everybody in the league, um, you know, because he is one of the most iconic coaches to ever coach uh, in the league. And um, But Bill Walsh, he left a legacy, you know, he left a coaching, uh, coaching tree, a coaching system, a coaching playbook, a philosophy that's called the West Coast offense. And you look at the list of the uh, past and present head coaches, um, who are currently coaching and previously coaching, who came from Bill Walsh's coaching tree. And uh, you just look at the names on that list and you think, well, that's why he was so good. Um, you know, in my opinion, I thought he should have stayed a few more years as the 49ers head coach. Uh, I thought the ownership as well, the 49ers, probably didn't take care of him as much as they should have. Um, well, he had he definitely had a few more years and you know who knows maybe they would have won more than five rings if we're still in charge so that's my wrap on bill walsh um what do you think uh bill walsh should be uh ranked in the top all-time nfl head coaches do you think he should be ranked as the um as a legendary head coach uh, do you even rate him at all uh, please leave your comments down below in the uh, in the comment section below. Um, thank you again for watching, guys. Um, stay safe. Comment, write, subscribe, and on my next video, I'll be talking about another head coach. See you on the next one.